Welcome to Rolling Hills Radio with Ken Hardley. Join us for an hour of music and conversation from Shawbucks in Jamestown, New York. Tonight's guests are Christine Lavin and Jen Siget. Now please welcome our host, Ken Hardley. Well, you single boys can ramble, you single boys can roam. But it takes a married man, boys, to sing a worried song. A married man to sing a worried song. It was once I used to ramble and I sung a single song. But now that I'm married, boys, I had to change my tune. Oh, a married man sing a worried song. I was rough and I was rowdy when I led a single life. But I got to take it easy since I got myself a wife. I'm a married man, sing a worry song. I've got six little children to feed and educate. Now it's really got me thinking like no nickel on my plate. I'm a married man, sing a worry song. I am very happy married and I got to save my dough. We got six children and expecting several more. I'm a married man, sing a worry song. We got six children and expecting several more. Kids run out like cattle when we open up the door. Married man, sing a worried song. Yes, you single boys can ramble and lead a rowdy life. But you'll have to take it easy when you get yourself a wife. A married man, sing a worried song. You'll have a flock of children and have others coming on. Take some married man, boys, to sing a weary song. I'm a worried man, sing a worried song. A married man, sing a worried song. Take some married man to sing a worried song. Rolling Hills Radio is funded in part by the New York State Council on the Arts Decentralization Reed Grant Program with support from the New York State Legislature and Governor Andrew Cuomo and administered by the Tri-County Arts Council. Rolling Hills Radio is underwritten in part by the Jamestown Gazette, the hometown newspaper with good news. Thank you, Julius Isla Hanley. And welcome to Rolling Hills Radio, brought to you from Shawbucks, the club concert venue nestled in the entertainment district of the city of Jamestown on the shores of beautiful Chautauqua Lake. On Rolling Hills Radio, you'll hear grassroots Americana music from a wide range of genres. This episode, we feature two outstanding songwriters who also happen to be excellent and well-respected performers. First up, we have a woman whose songwriting and musicianship resulted in award-winning albums, lots of them, where her versatility comes in the form of not only playing several instruments, but also being able to write and sing with intensity and sophistication. She's a radio show host, a fine musician, and more. And uh, here she is with a song from her brand new album, It's About Time. It's called Smell the Flowers. Please welcome Jen Sigget to the Rolling Hills Radio Stage. <laughs> your eyes put your finger down as there for the taking the whole world could be ours if we start and smell the flowers flesh and bone joy and pain beneath the land the soil's the same It's unsown dreams Turn kind men sour So let's start And smell the flowers Find them blooming desert sands On alpine mountain tops Pushing through the concrete cracks and vacant urban lines on the water 
in the snow along the boulevard in exotic far off lands in your own backyard seek the truth reject fear make each day count while we're still here we may have seasons or merely hours so let's stop and smell the flowers yes i stop and smell the flowers i think it's time we stop and smell the flowers Jen Sigurd. That was really something. Do I notice you played bass on guitar while you're playing the other riffs? Yeah. So th this was a first for me. I play a, I've played in drop tunings before, but this was my first time playing in drop D tuning, if you're a player. Um, but I'm playing out of the key of G, uh, which was a little bit different than usually I think when people play in drop D, they play in D. Um, so it's a little bit of a, a switch up for me. So, Beautiful. But I hear Ry Cooter does it all the time. So... <laughs> So I like to think I'm like Vrykuter, right? <laughs> that's my that's my fantasy. You're good. You're very good on guitar. Oh, no thank you. Thanks, yeah, Ken. Yeah. I will take that. You have a uh, brand new album out. It's about time. I and uh, do. your last in so long, Pollyanna, got all kinds of awards. It did. And uh, I have to say, I've listened to that one, but I listened to the new one. It is outstanding. Oh, really awesome. Like Thanks, Ken. And you have the McCrary sisters. On this I have the McCrary sisters on this record. I have a lot of people that make me feel lucky to be alive on this record. Uh, another would be Luther Dickinson uh, is on Black this record. Crows. From, he was in the Black Crows till uh, 2011, but he's also the, the front man of the North Mississippi All-Stars, which is just as good of a band in my opinion. Um, and also a fellow named Colin Linden, who's more of a behind the scenes guy, but he's in a band called Blackie and the Rodeo Kings. Uh, it's his primary project, but he produces all kinds of stuff and uh, and you'll see him playing on people's records and producing people's records all over the place. So great, great, yeah, great, great. I'm well, a very lucky girl. <laughs> well, they're lucky to be on your album. I oh, have to say thanks. That. Yeah, 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 I'm full of compliments tonight. <laughs> anyway. Um, Thank you. you uh, now, your album has songs that you play by yourself. Sometimes there's all kinds of instrumentation. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you decide whether you're going to have a, you know, a solo, just you and the guitar, versus mm -hmm. a big band? You do both. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the, ideally, the song works in both formats because I do a lot of, a lot of solo shows like I'm doing tonight. Um, and when I have the band, I feel lucky to have the band and, and to be able to rock some of the tunes out. The next tune is a little bit less folky. It's a little more of a rocker. Um, but I, I feel lucky to have the ability to do both, frankly. Um, Ideally, like I said, if a song works, I can it'll handle both formats equally well. Sure, um, yeah. So that's sort of a goal. I don't know that I aim to write a song for a band or not for a band. I okay. think it just sort of all comes out in the laundry when you record. And honestly, heading into a, a recording project, I always have like my preconceived notions of what songs will be my favorite going in. And inevitably, they're never the same coming out. It's usually different songs have yeah. usurped them because of the way the... The, the way the band doesn't let their talent to the record. I mean, yeah. um, you don't know going in what Luther Dickinson's going to play on your record, you know, until you hear it. And then you say, oh, I really like this song now because <laughs> this lick really gets me or whatever thing, you know, so. And it's a chemistry, right? It's definitely yeah. chemistry. And also letting the musicians and the other talent on the record really shine and, and do what they want to do and have a little bit of creative freedom also. Right. Give them some direction, but a little freedom also is a, the balance you're going for, ideally, yeah, yeah, yeah. as a songwriter, Yeah. Would you do another song for us? I would love to. Uh, so something people don't know about me often is that I, before I was a songwriter, I came close to being a meteorologist. Um, and so this is, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so this song is me letting my, my nerdy side out. This is called Hurricane Rider. Ladies and gentlemen, Jen Siget. <laughs> Grabbing through the hour of a hurricane Threading through a needle in an aeroplane Trouble ahead, trouble behind Flying in low and blind Hurricane rider Hurricane rider 
Vindo in the levy, but the quiz been breached. Try to rise above it, but you're in too deep. Water head, not water behind. Big bird, don't throw me a line. Who came right up? Who came right up? Right, right, right. Between the rhythm of the pounding heel Mama heard the every time and start to wail Tempest ahead, tempest behind Screaming down the coastline Who hurricane rider Who hurricane rider Hurricane Rider Jen Sigget. <laughs> and you can find out more about Jen on jensigget.com. Well, now we have a woman who has been on the fi she's been a fixture in the folk scene for for a, a while now after having been encouraged by none other than the great Dave Van Ronk to jump into this wonderful life. Since that time she has done 23 albums as a freelance writer having been published in such places as Huffington Post and the Washington Post. She's written and co-written books and has awards way too numerous to mention here. With I Am Psychic and So Are You, please welcome Christine Lavin to the Rolling Hills Radio Hey everybody! Stage. This is a psychic test set to music and there's some arithmetic in the psychic test. If you're not good at math, you can use a paper and a pencil. It doesn't affect the psychic part of the test. Or you can use a calculator on your cell phone. Here we go. I am psychic, so are you. Just do what I ask you to. You skeptics won't believe it's true. But I am psychic, so are you. I want everybody here to pick a number between one and nine. Don't say it out loud. Don't even tell the person sitting next to you, okay? But remember it. Now double it. Add 10. Divide this number by two. Subtract the number that you started out with from the number you have now. Look at my brain, look at my brain. You have some psychic powers if you are now thinking of the number five. How many were thinking of the number five? Raise your hands. Oh, great. You weren't thinking of number five? I'm so sorry, you're out. We're on the honor system. <laughs> but everybody was thinking of five. I invite you to the second level of psychic testing. How did you, are you guys taking the test too? Okay, okay. I want everybody now to pick a number between two and 17. Remember it. Now double it. Add eight. Divide this number by two. 
subtract the number that you started at. From the number you have now, look at my brain, look at my brain, you have even more psychic powers if you are now thinking of the number four. How many were thinking of four? Oh, oh my goodness gracious. We're gonna make this much harder. Your, this town is like way off the charts. All right, here we go. This is the highest level of psychic testing allowed. I want everybody now to pick a number between three and 750,000. Pick a high number if you're confident, pick a low number if you're not. But remember it. Now double it. Add two. Divide this number by two. Subtract the number that you started out with from the number you have now. now. Don't say it. Whatever this number is, I want you to go to the corresponding letter of the alphabet. If you think of the number one, that would be A, 2, B, 3, C, 4, D. Okay, so you're all thinking of a letter. I want you to think of a fruit that begins with the letter that you are thinking of. Okay? So you're thinking of a fruit. Now, go to the second letter of the fruit you are thinking, and I want you to think of a city anywhere in the world except the United States that begins with the second letter of the fruit that you are thinking. So you're thinking of a fruit, you're thinking of a city in the world, and you're looking at my brain. Okay. It goes on your resume. You are 100% psychic if you are now thinking of an apple in Paris. How many were thinking of an apple in Paris? Where? Chris An apple in Peking. You're not psychic, you're psycho. <laughs> That's what that means. Christine Lavin. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, we're just getting started here, too. Well, Christine, welcome to Rolling Hills Radio. Uh, oh, thank you. Dave Van Rock, huh? Dave Van Rock at Saratoga. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he said, Christine, you've got to do this for a living. Well, he said, you know, um, I was given a card that earlier that night from a guy named Herb Gart, who was Don McLean's manager. He saw me do six shows, and he said, you should learn how to play guitar better, and when you do, come to New York. I think I could help you. And that very same night, Dave Van Ronk was driving from Montreal to New York. Lena Spencer had me sing a song for him, and he said, you should come to New York. And I said, I will, but I have to learn how to play guitar better. He said, I'm a teacher. I'll teach you. <laughs> and my life changed. I never thought I would leave Saratoga, ever. <laughs> you got the Dave Van Ronk voice down. That's, really yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's really good. Um... But, you know, he was also left-handed and played right-handed guitar. So Is that right? Yes. He said, you will always have a left hand slightly smarter than the average guitar player, but you will have a right hand slightly dumber. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Dave Van Rock. Yeah. yeah. Now, All Music calls you. This is allmusic.com. They call you one of the most prolific songwriters in folk music. You've done almost one album a year for a couple decades Yeah, and I, but I'm more proud of the fact that I've produced ten compilations of other people's work who I love. And I heard you talking about Rachel Kilgore. Is yes. it Kilgore or Kilgower? That's she, a good question. We'll ask her when she comes. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, she has just got a song called Rabbit in the Road that is one of the most devastatingly beautiful songs. Tonight, you know, when you go home, just think, Google, Rachel Kilgore, Rabbit in the Road, and you'll thank me later. <laughs> you will. You very much will. All those albums, all those compilation albums, do you have any spare time? What do you do? I knit, and I fold napkins. <laughs> <laughs> No, people ask, how did you get into napkin folding? I found this relaxation tape, because I never sleep. And it's this woman with a very soft voice teaching you how to fold napkins. And I watched it, and I never fell asleep, but I learned how to fold napkins. So now I teach everybody. <laughs> so tell us about your experience with the Rolling Thunder Review. Well, Lena Spencer wanted to, to meet up with them 
and bring them to the cafe, not knowing that the cafe, which at the time held about 80 people, that there were 90 people in the cast and crew of Rolling Thunder Review. <laughs> so there's no way they could play the cafe, but they let us travel with them the first week of the tour, and I got to watch the show from the front row, from way in the back by the follow spot operator, from sitting in the wings, and I ended up writing a song about Ramble and Jack Elliott that I'm gonna sing later for you, because I hear he opened your series this year, right? He opened the, he opened the, uh, the season, yes. How's indeed. he doing? How old is he? Uh, he's 87, do I have that right? Wow. Yeah, he's eight, 87 years old. How's he look? Uh, he's still cute, oh, isn't yeah. he? <laughs> he's a cute man. I'm glad you said that. I, 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 I can't <laughs> yeah, say that. Yeah, he is. He's, cu he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's cute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they told me, you know, they warned me, you know, he's, he's the one guy who can out-talk you, and, and he did. He, <laughs> Yeah, I'll talk to you on stage, but maybe you can give him his run for his money here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so songwriting. You write so many songs. Do they just, like, fall out of your brain? Do you have to work to get your songs no, written? No, you know, it's not like, and Jen probably is the same way. It's not like we're searching all the time looking for songwriting ideas. It's like when they're ready to be written, they will not leave you alone. It's like somebody <laughs> tucking on your sleep. Does that happen to you, too? Snatching them out of the sky, yep, pretty much. Yep. So... I don't know. I might get a song here tonight. You never know. <laughs> oh, I lived in fear of you writing a song to me. So <laughs> <laughs> no need. That's okay. That, that'll be <laughs> that'll be that'll be fine. Um, but so many topics. You you uh, politically. Uh, yeah, you know, it's like we don't have the luxury of not paying attention. We all have to be be paying attention because we're living through such an amazing time. And the guys are gonna the guys and women are gonna write the history books. We all have to pay attention so they get it right. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that in just a minute. Uh, but also, you've written love songs. Most of them are a little unhappy. Well, you know, it's like when you're happy, you don't want to write a song. You just want to <laughs> just want to cuddle with somebody. But it's when you're unhappy. Do you know John Forster? John Forster. The, he wrote Entering Marion, and he's very, very funny. He's written the quintessential folk song about writing love songs. It's going to be on his new record. So remember, Rachel Kilgore, Rabbit in the Road, John Forster. Anything that he's written. <laughs> Anything John Forster's written, okay. okay. Yeah. And the relationship songs, is that what he does? Um, he's, he's, uh, he comes from the Harvard Hasty Pudding tradition, so he's oh, very, very brainy and theatrical, but he's uh, sort of a folk guy, but he plays piano. And uh, he's, he's one of the best who's out there. There's so many great people working. And the, to watch the Grammys last night was so disappointing because there were so few songs. It was all spectacle. Yeah. yeah we yeah. have no spectacle, but we have the songs. Is that <laughs> 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 well, that's what we do here. I think you hit it right on the head. Mm -hmm. um, Christine's album, uh, Spaghettification, Spaghettification. I practiced saying that before the show. <laughs> um, it's a wonderful, wonderful album, and we're going to hear a song from it right now called mm -hmm. uh, When It All Goes Wrong, We'll Turn the Ship Around. Tell yep. us about this yep. song. Well, spaghettification itself is a term, if you get too close to a black hole in space, the gravity is so intense that it pulls your body into long strands of DNA, and you die instantly. And so that's what spaghettification means. <laughs> And, and on this record is Neil deGrasse Tyson and Alan Stern, who is the head of the Pluto flyby, and, Alan, and Neil deGrasse Tyson doesn't believe Pluto is a planet, so they hate each other. And they're both on my record, and I got a D in astronomy. <laughs> it's like, how'd this happen? But this, well, I'll do, the, do one of the songs from this record? Yeah. Uh, yeah okay, yeah. here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Christine Lavin. Yeah. There's a storm on the horizon, skies are blustery and gray. All hands on deck, anchors away. The captain says full steam ahead, you can trust in me. Now we're hanging on for dear life between the devil and the deep blue sea. His crew are all landlubbers, his son-in-law and daughter. Neither of them has spent any time on this kind of water. He's never piloted a ship. He does not want advice. As we head into the storm, I guess he'd rather roll the dice. And when it all goes wrong, we can't say we weren't warned. 
And when it all goes wrong, when we're enveloped by the storm, when it all goes wrong, when he drives that ship aground, we'll throw captain and crew overboard, then turn their ship around. I wrote this song two weeks before his inauguration. I thought by now the song would be passe. But we're living in a time where we get no clear explanation. Like how did Matt Whitaker get the top job at the DOJ? And if you think he's qualified, I have got a Bitcoin powered, time traveling, Bigfoot masculine toilet that I would like to sell you. Better button down the hatches, the ship of state will drift. We never know exactly when and how his mood will shift. He can't focus on the ocean, he can't focus on the land. Our captain's so distracted by what's tweeting in his hand. Pirates are lurking on the waves, hackers in the wild. Love the way he crook his finger when he said you're fired. As if those words entitled him to lead this bloodless coup. I look forward to the day we say those words to you. And when it all goes wrong, we can't say we weren't warned. And when it all goes wrong, when we're enveloped by the storm. When it all goes wrong, when he drives that ship aground. With we'll rope captain and crew overboard, then turn the ship around. All right, we'll throw you life preservers. We don't want to watch you drown. But we're going to throw you overboard, then turn this ship around. Thank Christine you. Lavin. Thank you. We'll turn the ship around. Well, if you'd like to know more about Christine, you can find her on christinelavin.com. We'll be back with more good cheer, fine songs, and together we'll play a blues tune like you've never seen before. You have the old autos guarantee on that one. So hang on for a minute. We'll be right back. You are listening to Rolling Hills Radio with Ken Hartley, episode 84. If you would like to be part of our Napkin live studio folded. audience, log on to rollinghillsradio.org to get your ticket today. Or call the Rolling Ticket Hotline at 716-294-0416. We'll be back after the break with more from Christine Lavin and Jen Siget. The second half of our show begins in just a minute. Rolling Hills Radio is brought to you in part by the Jamestown Gazette and the Comfort Inn. If you would like to be included on the Rolling Hills email distribution list, send your email address to ken at rollinghillsradio.org. To hear or view this episode and all past episodes of Rolling Hills Radio, log on to rollinghillsradio.org. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And now, back to Rolling Hills Radio with Ken Hartley. Thank you, Julius Isla Hanley. And we have lots more to go here from Jamestown, New York. We're broadcasting right up the hill from the banks of the storied Chattacoin River. You can find us on non-commercial outlets from coast to coast. Rolling Hills Radio is nationally syndicated on global community radio, and it's our intention to stay non-commercial. I keep saying this, but it keeps being true. Independent voices and media are more important than ever. With increasing pressure on and from the very few corporate controllers of the media, outlets that have no need to respond to that pressure are a necessary part of the fabric of our way of life. And getting out of the mainstream of the mass media means that you never know what you're going to hear. I was listening to a low-power station, a community radio station the other day, and I found out that like fingerprints, Every tongue print is different. So I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> we'll just leave that right there. In fact, maybe we'll let Christine write a song about that. You know? <laughs> well, Jen is about to play another song for us. Ladies and gentlemen, Jen Siget with One in a Million. I co-wrote this song with a member of an all-girl band I'm in called Stella. The songwriter's name is Joe Serapair. It was one, it was 
was one in a million It was one in a million They say Then he tried Some of that They were never satisfied Till they'd taken down The Southern Pacific dream Till you know That my daddy was a hunger He drove that bullet down along the means He could drag us so freight down Still it got there safe and sound He was the greatest on the Southern Pacific train And it was one, it was one in a million It was one in a million, they say Then he tried some of that Southern Pacific train It was on a winter's night near to be you could see that model tear through the rain No one heard, not a sound After he called for the bow Till he pulled the ears on the Southern Pacific train And it was one, it was one in a million It was one in a million, they say Then he tried Southern Pacific train well, No one knows quite for sure how it happened No one knows How they hauled it away All they left I was told Is my daddy lying cold Down beneath the rails Of the Southern Pacific train And it was one It was one In a million It was one In a million They say he tried some of that They were never satisfied Till they'd taken down The Southern Pacific train And when he tried some of that They were never satisfied Till they'd taken down The Southern Pacific train Till they'd taken down The Southern Pacific train Jen Siggett. Jen Siggett there on the banjo. Beautiful, uh, beautiful singing. You know, I'm going to ask Jen some questions about songwriting. Songwriting has become more and more popular over the, and, and over the recent past, and that's a very, very good thing. In fact, there are several of you in our audience right now who are very brilliant songwriters. Um, yeah, it's, it's become quite a thing. You do a lot of songwriting workshops. You're in the business of critiquing other people's songs. What's oh. that like? Oh, I don't like to think of it as critiquing so much as, uh, as just, uh, you know, bouncing ideas back and forth. And I have my own people that I do that with. I think probably all songwriters do. Probably Christina's shaking her head yes. Um, we all have our people we feel comfortable enough to be, because it's pretty vulnerable to, to show people a song before it's completed, right? Um, and it takes sometimes a while. Like some of my songs I've taken like years before I feel comfortable playing them out yeah. in public. Um, and so I really, I feel like it's more of a, less, less of a criticism and a critique and, and more of a, um, a, like, can we get our brainwaves on, in the same place and make the song connect for both of us? And, and how can we do that? Do you do you tell people particular chords like an F sharp would be good here? Or 
I have very occasionally said maybe a transitional chord here or there yeah. might might make the song move a little better. Um, generally speaking, you know, I don't want I don't want to change too much the gist of what someone was going for in a song, um, but maybe just embellishing on what they've already established as the core chords of the song sometimes helps. <laughs> You've been writing songs for a little while now. Tell me this. Does songwriting get easier with time? Oh, man. I say no for myself. Um, but I think my problem, the reason I say no is for myself anyway, I'm more aware of the audience than I used to be when I was younger. So when I was younger, I just I just wrote stuff and I made myself happy. And uh, and as I've been a, become a, more of a performer for a living, I, I'm too aware sometimes of the audience and that people are gonna hear the song. And so I find that sometimes that slows me down and I get a little caught up in my head uh, when I'm writing because I'm thinking about the fact that the audience is gonna hear it. So that's something I'm working on personally as a, as a songwriter is to get out of that and just to get back to the place of of pleasing myself and yeah. and uh, and enjoying what I'm doing, uh, and I think I think I'm I'm getting making strides, but it's a work in progress. Okay, so you're, you're <laughs> reaching deep, and you you're trying to. I try to. I wish I was as funny as Christine, but I'm just really not. <laughs> so, so my songs tend to be kind of serious and dark, and and uh, and and also, as Christine said, I I write more from a place of sadness and darkness than happiness. Because when you're happy, you're happy, and and uh, and I'm also trying to break myself out of that too, because I don't want to have just albums of sad songs. And I think I I think it's not all sad songs on the new record, but uh, in fact, this the next song I'm going to play. That's a good segue, actually, is, is actually, a, is I think, a happy song and is an uplifting song. Um, and it, and it, the funny thing is it came from sort of a sad place. I, won't, I don't want to say the story of where it came from necessarily, um, but it, it did. It came from a sad place, and I turned it into a happy song because I'm a work in progress, and I'm trying to do that more often. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, let's find out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, with Love is Wild, Jen Siget. <laughs> Love is wild, it won't be tamed, it knows no bounds, it's not ashamed. I speak up loud, but it never boasts, love makes amends, love makes the most. And love alone can set men free make a blind eye hear make a deaf ear see light up the dark unlike the cage love has no end it feels no age Let love be our religion, our holy wood. Let it be our temple. Let the truth be heard. The doors stand open, so come on in. All are welcome. No love is sin. All are welcome. No love is a sin. Beautiful. That was Jen Siget. Well, okay, we're going to have Christine play a little bit more for us. This is called It's a Good Thing She Can't Read My Mind. Christine Levin. Well, I was thinking that if Jen and I were in a musical together, this would be the perfect song <laughs> to follow hers because I wrote this song when I fell in love with somebody I had nothing in common with. Is there anybody here in that situation want to raise your hands? <laughs> yeah. Well, now you can say, this is our song. I 
am at the opera. I don't like the opera, but he loves the opera, and I love him. I follow the libretto, I follow the conductor, when I follow the plot, my head begins to spin. I don't understand a word, even when it's English, everyone around me says, oh, this is the fine. I don't like the opera, look, I'm at the opera. Good thing he can't read my mind. How long did you say this opera was? Oh, 16 hours, oh, what a treat. I am eating sushi. I do not like sushi. He loves sushi, and I love him. You get the idea. I did a lot of stupid things in the name of love. But I sang the song at an open mic, and it shows the importance of open mics for folk singers, because there was a guy at the bar named Rene Ruiz from a vocal group called Toxic Audio, and he called me over after I sang the song, and he said, you know, you should write a version of that song for a man to sing, because it's not just women who do stupid things in the name of love. Men do, too. Is that true? <laughs> testify, testify, brother. <laughs> well, I took the challenge. I've written this for you dudes. I hope you like it. This is called Good Things She Can't Read My Mind, A Dude's Eye View. I am at a shopping mall. I do not like shopping malls. She loves shopping malls and I, I hit a nerve, didn't I? <laughs> every time, she, I get the blues every time she stops to look at shoes. I'm sure there are men here who will concur. I wanted to stay home today to watch the Buffalo Bills play a monumental pigskin contest of the manly kind. But I am at a shopping mall. I hate shopping malls. Good thing she can't read my mind. Sure, I'll hold your purse while you try that on. <laughs> no, I don't think that dress makes your butt look big. I am at a craft fair. I do not like craft fairs. She loves craft fairs and I love her. Origami topiary face painting scrapbooking and my favorite dream catchers <laughs> What the hell's a dream catcher? What the hell is decoupage? Mara's dancing. I need something I can hide behind. I can't stand craft fairs. Look, I'm at a craft fair. Good thing she can't read my mind Make my own soap How did you know that was my dream? I am not complaining, I'm just making observations. Expanding your horizons is a sign of sophistication. Now I'm in a Pilates class every Sunday morning. Though sometimes thoughts of watching overcome me without warning. I am at a chick flick. I do not like chick flicks. She loves chick flicks and I love her. Oh my God, it's a double bill. Now I'm really feeling ill. It's beaches, followed by the way we were. I am in an awful mood. I'm eating awful food. All I wanted was to kick back and unwind. Instead, I'm at two chick flicks. I hate chick flicks. Good thing she can't read my mind. Tomorrow night is terms of endearment and fried green tomatoes. How lucky can one man get? If you see me at a chick flick, see me in a craft booth, see me in a shopping mall wallowing in despair. Don't feel sorry for me, I must be in love. Why in the hell else would I be there? Before I met her, life was dull. I never took any chances, but now I leap at every opportunity I find. I don't like prefers or shopping malls or chick flicks, but maybe I will in time. Maybe I will, in time, go with you to the Downton Abbey Napkin Folding Festival. <laughs> I would love to. Christine Lavin. Thank you. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I get... I get the feeling there's a man looking at me right now and he's thinking, I am at a folk concert. I do not like folk concerts. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sing us something romantic, Christine. That was about relationships. Well, you know, I, I was going to ask you about writer's block, but I get the feeling that you just write songs and that uh, everything happens for you. Well, mm. you know, it, but I'll tell you, though, um, I became very good friends with a songwriter named Irvin Drake at the end of the last 15 years of his life. He was 95 when he died. He wrote It Was a Very Good Year, and he wrote Good Morning Heartache, and he demanded that songs had to be exact rhymes. He said if your song, it was actually Johnny Mercer who said to Irvin Drake, if your song doesn't rhyme exactly, it's because you haven't finished working on it yet. And so the first version of Good Thing, the girl version, is I rhyme time and mind, which would make Irvin crazy. So. I wrote the second version after I became friends with Irvin, and all the rhymes are exact, so it's, it's a, a better constructed song. And that's advice I give to songwriters all the time. It came from Johnny Mercer, who wrote Moon River, Stardust. I mean, he was a great songwriter. Went from Johnny Mercer to Irvin Drake, from me to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very nice, very nice. Been in the business for a while. Do you have any advice for people who are getting into the business now? Well, I think that um, it's best to really learn how to make videos. I taught myself with iMovie and an iPhone. I don't have any fancy equipment. And because this, this news cycle is so fast that if something happens, you want to get up there right away and put it out there online because there's no time to waste because you know tomorrow he's going to do something even worse. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But I, I wanted to ask you a question, Ken. Have you ever done something stupid in the name of love? <laughs> um, yeah. What? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Is there more to this question? Because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to talk about this anymore. No, no. Well, like one time, this guy told me that he took country line dancing for two years, hating every second of it, and then she broke up with him, and he wanted to kill himself. <laughs> Oh, Lord. That is a nightmare right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. You have another song. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I played at the Kerrville Folk Festival, and um, I flew from New York to Houston, Houston on to San Antonio, and I swear to God, this is true. It just happened. I saw a fly get on the plane in Houston, and then we took off, and I saw the look in the fly's eyes. was like, whoa. <laughs> and it, it was May. It was thunderstorm season, and the plane was struck by lightning, and the fly and I switched bodies, and I wrote the song, and I was trapped inside the body of the fly. This is Christine Levin. I'm a fly on a plane I am buzzing all around I got out in Houston Oh no, I'm San Antonio bound I'm not riding in coach I think I fly first class I'm on the head of a banker Zip, zip, I'm on the rim of her glass My oh my, I'm a fly Taking a free ride on a plane I'm a fly on a plane my flight's a little erratic The highest I've ever been Was in a swing time cowgirl's attic I didn't mean to leave home But now the die is cast I guess my destiny is to roam And to fly really fast, very fast, mighty fast My oh my, I'm a fly Took in a free ride on a plane when I get to San Antonio, I'm going to make a lot of new fly friends. When I tell them that I am from Houston, their eyes will bug out and they'll say, come again. Don't tell us no Texas tall tales. How did you get here? I'll say, I flew. Oh, those San Antonio flies, I'll say, man alive, we've got immense respect for you. Woo, 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 woo. Zip, zip, and I do die. Zip, zip, and yeah. Zip, zip, and I do die. Say hey, Willie May, say hey, I'm a fly on a plane, I got a lot of dreams, I never counted on a rolled up in flight magazine. That was Christine Lavin. All right, we're about to do a song that was written by jazz pianist Richard M. Jones and has since become a blues standard. It's been covered by Big Bill Brunzi, Dinah Washington, Nina Simone, and lots more. We're going to do a version that may answer Jim Morrison's musical question, where's your will to be weird? A 
trouble in mind I'm blue But I won't be blue always Cause that sun is gonna shine in my back door someday I'm going down to the river I'm gonna bring my rocking chair If the blues don't leave I'll ride away from here Traveling by much for sharing your time with us. I'm Ken Hardley. We'll see you next time on Rolling Hills Radio. You've been listening to Rolling Hills Radio with Ken Hardley, episode 84. Special thanks to Jen Siggett and Christine Levin. The Rolling Hills Radio cast and crew are Kathy, the overlord and master Hartley. Steve, is this thing on? Chapel, aspiring new age man, Diamond Dick Gould. The musician whisperer, Brianne Fidel. Sword swallower, Tom Fidel. Making sure everyone is paying attention, Nicole Chapel. Dancing like no one is watching, Susan George. Still using a slide roll, Jim Goodling. Video Kip, sneaking in an Altoid, Reynolds, and explaining wind chills to Diamond Dick Gould at Tomasini. I'm Julia Cecil Hanley reminding you to never keep bananas in a refrigerator. Please join us next time on Rolling Hills Radio with Ken Hardley.